Welcome to this presentation about using artificial intelligence and machine learning in detecting and fighting cancer. Specifically, it's about using artificial intelligence to detect whether a tumor, whether a tumor is cancerous or non-cancerous. Hmm. So we have the definition of cancer, which refers to any one of the large number of diseases characterized by development of abnormal cells and have the ability to infiltrate and destroy a tissue. So cancer starts out as a tumor and a tumor is just a collection of cells in the body. And when those cells are infected, i.e. when they're cancerous, they start spreading and destroying other tissues, destroying the body. And when it's not treated, it leads to death, it's a terminal illness. And cancer treatment is also unaffordable by a large number of people because it's really expensive and even when received, it has very many side effects. The downsides are still there despite the treatment such as nausea, vomiting, constant pain, blood clots, etc. So it's really important for us to find a way to detect whether these tumors are cancerous or not cancerous before any onset of more signs and symptoms before it starts affecting the body in a negative way. So how we are going to apply artificial intelligence to this, uh, using, using uh, radio biology, yeah, biological radio imaging, we can have images of the tumors and with, when the tumors are analyzed, you can get various dimensions of them, such as their, their radius, their texture, their perimeter, their area, many other attributes of the tumors because cancerous tumors have varying dimensions to non-cancerous tumors or normal ordinary uninfected cells. So with such data, with such measurements of the tumors, we can determine whether a tumor is cancerous or not and with by coming up air and machine learning, we can do this faster, more efficiently, and more effectively. And here we have the data is provided by repositories such as Cargo. So supervised versus unsupervised learning. Supervised learning involves using labeled data sets that train algorithms to classify or predict outputs precisely. Unsupervised learning involves the use of algorithms to examine and group unlabeled data sets. They can help uncover unknown patterns in the data without human intervention. So supervised learning, human beings come together, get a data set, and then they group or they classify the data set. So they label it and then give it to the algorithm and it's used and the algorithm trained using that labeled data set. And the once the algorithm has been trained, it can then be, it can then use what it has learned to make predictions or to make forecasts on new data, new sets of data. Unsupervised on the other hand involves the machine teaching itself, the machine uncovering patterns and relationships between the data set it has been given. It can also, once it has learned, it can also use what it has learned to to make predictions and forecasts, but it's used mostly for uncovering unknown patterns or relationships between data. So the, their goals are different in that the goal of supervised is to predict outcomes, while the goal of unsupervised is to get new insights from existing data sets. So the, how we are going to apply supervised learning in this project, one, using the logistic regression model to predict a dependent data variable by analyzing the relationship between one or more existing independent variables. Such a model will be used in the project to classify the different types of tumors in the data set. Then how, with k nearest neighbors and the support vector machine, we shall still classify the different tumors or the different dimensions we have from our data and then will predict new tumors, new dimensions to see whether, based on what the machine or the algorithm has learned, whether this new tumor is cancerous or non-cancerous. How we're going to apply unsupervised learning? Unsupervised learning has a technique called dimensionality reduction. 
Dimensionality reduction is used when a data set is so large or a data set has so many attributes in that, in that uh, we need a way to shave off or to, to prune, to remove unnecessary data. And that's through dimensionality reduction. It's a technique to reduce the number of features on a data set without compromising the integrity of the data. So to get rid of all these unnecessary readings or qualities or attributes, we'll use dimensionality reduction and clustering also to group data and classify it in ways we might not know. So after classifying it ourselves, we can give it to an algorithm to help us find the unknown patterns again and supervise learning unknown patterns and make its own groupings and deduce its own relationships from this data set. Some of the technical challenges we might face is as far as much as it's efficient and effective, it's not 100% to detect and characterize some of these tumors. Interpreting, processing, and analyzing very large amounts of data is hardware, hardware intensive. It's hardware intensive and it will take a lot of power and yeah, there'll be a lot of variance in the implemented algorithms. Variance is an error in uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence whereby an algorithm is overly trained on a specific data set so when it's overly trained on this data set it will know it will predict a hundred percent correctly on this data set but when it's given a new data set it won't be able to predict it so if we are not careful we'll be able to predict what we have trained the algorithm on, but we won't be able to accurately predict on new tumors, new data sets, new groups of data. Some of the solutions to these technical challenges is by pre-training the algorithms to increase, to increase the accuracy with which they predict. So we'll have a focus on uh, supervised learning whereby we shall train the algorithm with pre-selected tumors and they'll be classified. We have, we have dimensionality reduction to reduce the size of the data set so the attributes to work with. And then algorithms should be trained with more generalized data sets to prevent the issue of variance. So we need to vary the data and uh, we shouldn't, we won't overly train an algorithm on a specific data set so that it doesn't incur the problem of variance. Here we discuss the difference between accuracy, recall, precision, and the F1 score. The F1 score. So accuracy is the number of correctly predicted data points out of all data points. It's expressed in terms of false positives, negatives, and true positives and negatives. Accuracy is basically what it is. The number, how correct has the algorithm performed? How accurate is it? How, at what percentage has it performed well? We'll see the formula. Precision is the fraction of relevant instances among all the retrieved instances. How well has the algorithm selected or predicted the correct outcomes out of all the out of all the presented outcomes how well how well has it performed how precise has it been how on point has it been recall is the fraction of retrieved instances among all the relevant in instances it's sort of like remembering did it get all did the algorithm get all the all the relevant instances in the total set of instances did it get all the relevant ones and here we see that a perfect classifier has a precision and recall equal to one. The F1 score, it's a measure of the model's accuracy on a data set to evaluate binary classifications. The F1 score is a combination of precision and recall, and it's sort of the standard measure of accuracy. It's just when the accuracy of an algorithm is needed in a singular format, we get the precision and the recall and we combine them to form the F1 score. These are the different formulae. As you see, accuracy is 
Um, TPT and FPFN stands for true positive, true negative, false positive, false negative. So a false positive, okay, let's start with a true negative, a true positive is something that's correct and the algorithm as marked as correct. True negative, something that's wrong, the algorithm has marked it as wrong. False positive, it's correct, but the algorithm has marked it as wrong. Hmm, that's a false negative. A false positive is something that's wrong, the algorithm has marked it as correct. A false negative is something that's correct, the algorithm has marked it as wrong. So accuracy is the total number of true positives and negatives out of all the, the total number of items. Recall is the fraction. Yeah, it's the fraction of relevant instances among all the retrieved. Yeah, precision, fraction of retrieved instances among all the relevant ones. And that is how we combine precision and recall to find the F1 score. Evaluation metrics for the project will use accuracy, meaning the proportion of correctly identified instances. Error rate, the proportion of incorrectly identified instances out of all identified instances. So we're going to find the percentage of false, false items, false negatives and false positives. How many errors has the algorithm made? Sensitivity, the probability of getting a true positive and specificity, the probability of getting a true negative. These are some of the references for the research that was made. And that is it. That's all for today. See you next time.